seems as though diaries are no longer something to be kept under lock and key. The latest trend is to write them on the internet. And every day around 70,000 people, one person every second apparently, begins what is known as a blog for the whole world to read. So why do so many people do it? Joining us now are our psychologist Angela Matanda and uh, Oliver Mann, who found the blogging phenomenon so fascinating he wrote a play using blogs. So Ollie, first of all, let's start with you. What, what, what is it? What is a blog? Yeah, it's one of those words, isn't it, people sort of hear and they're not actually quite sure what it is. It's short for weblog, so that gives you a good clue what it is. It's a type of website and it's a log, it's a diary. Mm. Many of them aren't actually all that different to, you know, pen and paper journals that people have been keeping under their bed or in their desk at home for centuries that Samuel Pepys kept, except the difference is now they're posted, that's what they call it when you put it on the internet, posted instantaneously onto the internet for the whole world to see potentially. And what sort of people would use a blog? Well, the thing is, I mean, the description I'll just give is slightly reductive because sometimes people use them to post photographs of their family holidays or to talk about politics or music or they talk about whatever they like. It's in a diary format. But it does lend itself to personal diaries. So um, I suppose it's more Angela's department in a way what sort of person, but often it's people that for some reason need to get something off their chest, make friends, um, talk about something that perhaps in real life they haven't got the opportunity to talk about or people that have just heard about this technology and want to claim some space on the internet. And they can do it anonymously. Yes. So uh, you got into it via an old school friend. You heard that he was doing a blog. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. contrary to appearances, I'm not that much of a geek. And um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I hadn't actually heard of blogging until about a year ago. So still ahead of you. So, oh, but, you know, way ahead. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sort of ahead of it. And um, uh, what it was is we, me and my flatmate Ben both went to the same secondary school. And there's this sort of newsletter that goes around for alumni. People send in what they've been up to. And this guy wrote in and said, you know, I've I've been keeping a blog, check out my blog. And this guy, he was a bit of a nerd at school, he was a bit of a peripheral character in our school, and we just had that kind of macabre curiosity, really. We wanted to know, what's he up to? What happened to him? It was one of them. So we went to his blog, and we just got completely sucked into his life story. Um, he wasn't having a good time at all. He was at university, but he was a mature student. Um, he was having bouts of depression. I think reading Still the Still a virgin. Still a virgin, yeah. Uh, and uh, it was um, definitely just a case of he was talking about this girl that he was madly in love with and we could see reading between the lines that she was in love with him but he didn't know um, and so we got completely hooked in and we started reading storylines out to each other and that's when I thought actually this works really well as drama it's like soap opera this would work really well in the theatre so so why w oh gosh uh, you think okay well my life hasn't gone the way I wanted it to go um, some relationships are down the pan I'm still a virgin at whatever age and I've got a really nothing going for me. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> not only that, you knew who he was. Yeah, I did. I should hate to say he's not in the play. I didn't do that. No, me, no. no. Um, yeah, well, I think it's just um, an excuse to, to talk to someone. I think a lot of people feel lonely, like they haven't got anyone to talk to. And actually, I mean, it, I'm making them sound like they're all sad, desperate people. Actually, they do find people to speak to. It's incredible, the support network they have. Mm. Well, this play is called Bloggers Real Internet Diaries, just in case you want to know. It's on every day at the Edinburgh Festival at uh, 10 past 3 in the afternoon uh, at the, I uh, can't read my own writing here, Underbelly. Smirnoff Underbelly, Smirnoff yeah. Smirnoff Underbelly, the 3rd to the 27th of August. Okay. So you went online, you looked through all these blogs, you got to know quite a few people. Mm -hmm. The criteria for a good blog that interested you was what? Well, I, uh, as a playwright, because I knew that I wanted to have these characters returning to the stage throughout the play, so they come on at the beginning and then they come back in the middle and the end and you follow their stories. Because mm. that's part of the whole thing, is, like I say, it is like a soap opera, you want to know what happens. And there's that thing when I was reading it, when I was reading my friend from school's one, of uh, sort of being in the office and occasionally checking back to see if anything had happened, you know. So I wanted this feeling that the stories develop, so I looked back through their archives. It's an option when you set up a blog, you don't have to, but you can keep an archive of everything you've ever written. And so I look back, if their first post interested me, I look back at the one they'd done the day before. They're all updated in reverse chronological order, so the most recent one's first. And then if that interested me, I went back to the very first one they ever wrote and saw if they had a development, if they had a, a character arc that I could put in a play. So you've got people whose lives change completely from the beginning of the play to the end of the play, which mimics really what does happen on blogs. Mm. Well, Fer both Fern and I have both read the play mm -hmm. from, from, from beginning to end, and mm. it is absolutely fascinating. Mm. It does hook you in because the, the, the quality of writing yeah. is extraordinary. The ones, obviously, not, they're not all like that, but the one that, ones that you've s selected, uh, these people have written beautifully, written mm. their thoughts. You get right into their heads. Mm. I think uh, that's something that really surprised me, actually, is I, I knew that there'd be this voyeuristic kind of big brother um, attraction, 
to people giving out confessionals, but I was really surprised by the quality of the writing that is out there. Mm. To be fair, I've chosen the best bits, if you like. There are bits in between that perhaps weren't so well written, but yeah. the truth is there are thousands well, also of good writers out there. Well, also, you did yeah. get permission of these people. You haven't yeah. randomly gone and taken off no. people's no. stories. You've got permission from them. Various stories, though. Ag agrophobic, uh, agrophobic sex chat line operator is one, yeah, of, the, one of the people. Nymph one, yeah. Nymphomaniac mum of three. There's the uh, bisexual businessman. Mm -hmm. you know, all these people who, who can't talk to anyone else, felt they didn't want to talk to anyone else, and just decided to throw it, throw it online. Yeah. And you say this is not new technology, but in the past it was difficult to set up, mm. but now it's much easier. That's right. I mean, in the past you would have had to have known HTML, which is web coding, which is really for nerds. Um, <laughs> it is difficult. They're making it easier to use, but it is difficult to use, and it's like learning a foreign language. Mm. Now, what's happened is Rupert Murdoch's bought MySpace.com, which is a kind of blog site. Google has bought blogger.com, which is a kind of blog site. As this has been a bit, bit exploding, all the big boys that own all the big websites have come in and bought these sites, and they've all had to up their game and make it really easy. Mm. Point and click, it's as easy as sending an email. Anyone aged 9 to 99 with an internet connection and something to say can go online and start well, a blog. I let's have a look at how you do it and how you read other people's. Here we go. Okay. Setting up a blog couldn't be easier. Now you no longer need to understand complicated computer coding. There are dozens of simple to use sites that will host your blog, but three of the most popular options, livejournal.com, wordpress.com, and blogger.com, all offer free hosting and are as easy as pointing and clicking. First, you need to create an account by entering a username, password, and email address. Next, enter a title for your new blog and your new web address, providing it's not already been taken. Choose a template, and before you know it, you're being prompted to enter your first post. And blogs your uncle, you're ready to talk to the world. So that's, uh, that's how it's done. Angela, uh, right at the very beginning, Ollie said, well, you know, sort of why you would do it is certainly your territory. Mm. So why would you want the whole world to read about your life? It's interesting, isn't it? It's this sort of interface between 21st century technology and what we've been doing for thousands of years, which is keeping diaries and journals and writing our very private feelings down. But I think we've just taken it to another level with blogging. And I think Ollie said it beautifully there. It's done for all kinds of reasons. People discuss politics. I, uh, Ashley did a blog when she went to China and I kept in touch with her that way. And people write their deepest, darkest thoughts. And you can go into this private space. You're in your own home. And you can write your, your feelings down, and it's, it's, you can become a fantasy character. You can take on whatever you want to do, and you have permission to do that. But what's different with this, you know, if somebody read my diary, I'd be so embarrassed. But here, somebody can actually come in and give you feedback on what you've said. And that, I think, is the sort of the 21st century twist. And you can invite this sort of community of people, whether you're getting validation or you're getting um, permission or you're just getting other people's thoughts mm. on what you have been experiencing or advice, actually. And quite a lot of the blogs we have on our website, people give each other an awful lot of support and an awful lot of advice about, let's say, we've done an item here on something like depression. They'll say, actually, I was depressed and I went to see a counsellor and it was really helpful. So you have that kind of immediacy and that kind of feedback and you do invite that into your own home and helpful that it is so anonymous you haven't a clue yes. who's writing it who's mm. responding and so you have no preconceived ideas about well the reason they said that is because they don't want me to da -da blah 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 or something you that's just right you do but I mean you have to be careful as well that if you're writing something that's terribly important and personal to you somebody might well come in with a criticism of you of what you've done and you've got to be prepared for that yeah. to and be I, judged to be judged and, and that's something you know if we obviously if you if you need therapy you don't have in a therapeutic encounter you're not it's completely non-judgmental but if you're looking for that kind of support and advice there you have to be warned it has to come with some kind of psychological health warning that you know you are likely to be judged by somebody else saying that for god's sake pull yourself together or whatever mm. that, that doesn't actually happen too much i mean you're right that is mm. a huge danger but actually mm. generally speaking that people are very very supportive of mm. each other you know well done mate stay in there you know that's great what you said they're all very supportive. I think the danger would be, why are they being supportive? Yes. Are they being yes. supportive because they want entertainment? Is this yeah. really going to help? Yeah. 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 Well, there's a lot, there is a lot of they? that uh, yeah. in, in the play. Well, you know, there is a, the, the, the figures all the way through. People mm. say, yes, that's it. You know, keep on with it, keep on with it. And, and, and the play, is, as Firm is saying, it's the real internet diaries. It's daily, 10 past three, the Smirnoff underbelly at the Edinburgh Festival from the 3rd to the 27th of August. Thank you. That's it. And if you want any information on our play, our website is cbloggers.com, S-E-E bloggers.com. Thank you, Ollie. He's done that brilliantly. <laughs> Thank you both very much.